So, the story of the acquired immune response starts with antigen presenting cells. And uh, I know that might sound a little weird because antigen presenting cells are part of the innate immune system. They don't require any sort of prior activation. But at some point, there's got to be communication between the, uh, the innate immune system and the acquired immune system. And antigen presenting cells provide that linkage. Just to remind you, the antigen-presenting cells that we've already talked about are things like monocytes, macrophages, and dendritic cells. And uh, so these are collectively the, uh, the mononuclear phagocytes, and they are the main antigen-presenting cells, or what I'm going to call the professional antigen-presenting cells. This is their job. There's a whole bunch of amateur antigen-presenting cells, actually almost uh, every cell in the body uh, is an amateur antigen-presenting cell. We'll talk about that later. These are the guys that have to do with, um, uh, like, it's their job to seek out and destroy pathogens and then present those antigens. We're going to see that there's actually one missing from this list, but that's because it actually has a different job and presents antigens for a different reason. So, we're going to start off here. I have a dendritic cell. Uh, doesn't matter that this is a dendritic cell. It could have been a macrophage. It could have been a, uh, a, a monocyte, although it's actually not super common for it to be a monocyte. But this is an antigen-presenting cell. I drew a dendritic cell because I thought it looked cool. Um, antigen-presenting cells go around the body um, or sometimes stay put in one place in the body. Um, but they're looking for foreign invaders. And if you recall, that's because they have toll-like receptors on them. These toll-like receptors bind to common uh, PAMPs, pathogen-associated molecular particles. Uh, and when they find a foreign invader, when they find something that triggers their PAMPs, uh, they are going to phagocytosis. So here we have a dendritic cell and a bacteria. It could have been a virus. Doesn't matter. Um, you know, viruses have PAMPs too. They can also be phagocytized. I just picked a bacteria because it was easy to draw. And when this uh, uh, dendritic cell is going to bump into the bacteria, it's going to phagocytize it. And once it has engulfed it, the bacteria ends up in a phagosome, which combines with a lysosome to make a phagolysosome. And the phagolysosome will digest the uh, bacteria. Now, if this were a neutrophil, the process would pretty much end here. All we would do is exocytose uh, all of the debris, and we'd be done. But... This is a dendritic cell. Dendritic cells are antigen presenting. So the dendritic cell is going to actually filter through all of the teared up bits of bacteria and find the most immunogenic portions. Basically, the parts of the bacteria that are best going to be recognized by an antibody. And it will bind a bunch of them to a special protein that we have here called an MHC2. MHC stands for Major Histocompatibility Complex, and the two is for class two. 
Obviously, there's going to be a class one. We'll talk about that later on. But this MHC2 is displaying a piece of that bacteria. So let's talk just a bit about MHC2s. Oops, there we are. And specifically MHC2s, uh, these are found on antigen-presenting cells. And pretty much only on antigen-presenting cells. I mean, they're the things that present the antigens, so that makes sense. Uh, they, let's see, they're found on antigen presenting cells. They bind foreign non self antigens. So anything presented on a uh, an MHC2 is going to be something that came from outside the cell or came from outside of your body. All right? It it it's obviously cuz it's going to be something that your uh, dendritic cell ate cuz it detected a pathogen, right? So those are going to be things that come from outside your body. Uh, the MHC2, um, yeah, so binds foreign antigens, uh, oh yes, and it recognizes CD4 receptors. That probably doesn't make any sense to you at all right now. That's fine. We'll explain that later. Now, these are important things to know about MHC2s. Uh, they're found on antigen-presenting cells. They bind and display, present, non-self, foreign antigens, and they recognize CD4 receptors. So this dendritic cell is now presenting an antigen and uh, that means it's going to have to present it to someone, right? It's not just going to, like, hang around presenting it to a bunch of, like, fibroblasts or whatever happens to be in its area. It needs to present this to lymphocytes of the, uh, uh, the, the acquired immune system, the specific immune system. Specifically, it needs to present this to helper T cells, and so it's going to go to a place where you can find lots of helper T cells. So once a dendritic cell has phagocytized something, it's displaying an antigen, it's going to bugger off to the local lymph node. It actually doesn't have to be a lymph node. Uh, it could be any lymphatic organ where lots of stuff like this happens. It could be the spleen might be the thymus, but lymph nodes are located all over your body, so the closest place is probably going to be a lymph node. So here we are. The antigen-presenting cell is now going to go hang out inside of a lymph node. And we are going to leave its story here. We will come back to this guy later on but we need to examine what's happening in other parts of the body while that takes place.